Happy Pride, everyone. It's Stephanie, and today I'm bringing you another installment of my curated collection series. This time I'll be covering the birdcage. Now, this was requested by viewer Overthinker Overanalyzer, and I knew as soon as they requested it, I needed to do this for Pride Month because this is one of my favorite queer movies, and I know it's a lot of yours too. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that this Pride Month, I'll be hosting a special fundraiser for Equality Florida. Equality Florida is Florida's only statewide organization dedicated to protecting the rights of LGBTQ plus people in the state of Florida. Stay tuned to the end of the video for more information or check out the links in the description. Anyway, let's get started. So this film came out when I was nine years old and my family absolutely ran that VHS ragged. Going into this, I already knew most of the lines that I wanted to interpret into polishes, but it was kind of a struggle because this movie definitely has like a distinctly Floridian vibe and that Floridian vibe is absolutely not my vibe, but I am pretty proud of the polishes I chose and the combinations I came up with. So The Birdcage is a 1996 comedy based off of La Cage Folle, which was a French play and then movie and then TV series. And then it had a sequel and it also became a musical that was first produced in the 80s. And The Birdcage is an adaptation of that set in America with added American politics and just a lot of other good stuff. I've now watched both movies and I do prefer The Birdcage, but the other one definitely does have its charm and I think it's interesting to check out if you want to watch it. The Birdcage stars Robin Williams and Nathan Lane, and for Nathan Lane, this movie kind of changed everything. His only notable movie role before this was Timon in The Lion King, so like he did start off pretty strong, but this is really what put him on the map for American film audiences, and I am so incredibly grateful for that because he is just so incredible incredible. So the film tells a story of a gay couple named Armand and Albert who together over the last 20 years have raised a son named Val. Val is Armand's biological son and he's come home to tell them that he's getting married and not only is his fiance's family uber conservative but actually her father's a conservative senator and right now he's in the midst of a scandal. So his fiance's parents played by Gene Hackman and Diane Wiest this movie is just so incredibly star-studded. They're coming down the next day and Val asks Armand to play it straight and also hide Albert so they don't find out that his parents are both men. Of course, this becomes a comedy of errors where Armand is trying to placate his son while also not ruining his relationship with Albert. And it all culminates with Albert using his drag expertise to fool the senator and his wife. But eventually everything is revealed. Val introduces Albert as his real mother. And then to escape the paparazzi, the senator and his family have to leave the club in drag. This movie is hilarious and emotional and heartbreaking heartbreaking. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go check it out. It is just absolutely a classic. But for now, let's get into the polish. So first on our list is Orly Party Animal. So this is a topper that is full of matte glitters that are pink and orange and yellow. And then it has a smattering of holographic glitter throughout. I swatched this over Cert Colors High Roller from their Vice collection because I didn't really explore this kind of a seafoam green color that's very common throughout the film. So I decided to just throw it in here as kind of a background color. So this is inspired actually by the costumes that the drag queens in the birdcage are wearing at the beginning of the movie. They're singing the song, We Are Family. And I think that that's like a motif that's throughout the movie. They play it again at the end of the movie. And of course, this movie is about uh, two separate families becoming one family, even though they are incredibly different. I was really excited to be able to include this because like I said, there was a very like Floridian vibe to this movie. And the colors in this polish, I think really encapsulated that. They encapsulated a lot of colors I wasn't able to really fill in with the rest of the collection like a lot of the street scenes and you know city skyline scenes have a lot of these colors in it so I think it works really well anyway this is Orly Party Animal or as I would call it We Are Family up next is a combination of polishes this is Hollow Tacos Play Rosé topped with Color Club RAR which was so kindly given to me by my friend Win Didymus and I would call this I'm quite aware of how ridiculous I am this look is based off the outfit that Albert or Starina 
Where's the first time you see her on stage? It's an amazing leopard print outfit. And I am repping the leopard print today in honor of this outfit. Now in this scene, she sings a song, Can That Boy Fox Trot? And I love this song, but I have never really known what it was from. I just kind of assumed it was from a show that I didn't know very well. And I was halfway right. So this is actually one of three Sondheim songs featured in this movie. So there's Can That Boy Foxtrot, which is sung in this scene. And that was actually cut from Stephen Sondheim's musical Follies. Later on, Armand and uh, Val's mother, who's played by Christine Baranski, also like crazy, crazy cast. Like every single person is just like, and this one, and this one, and this one, it's crazy. They sing a song, Love is in the Air. And that was actually cut from a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. There's also a song called Little Dream that Starina sings a little bit later that was actually written by Sondheim, especially for this movie. I had no idea about any of that. Had I not been making this video, I wouldn't have looked it up. And I am so glad that I did because that is so cool. I love Sondheim. And how amazing that he lent these songs to this movie, that he wrote Little Dream for this movie. Just incredible. So anyway, this is Hollow Taco Play Rosé topped with Color Club RAR, or as I would call it, I'm quite aware of how ridiculous I am. Next up is by Danny Viana, Ibis Escarlate, or as I would call it, My Natural Heat. My Natural Heat is a beautiful warm-toned red with gold flecks in it. So this, of course, is inspired by Agador Spartacus, Armand, and Albert's maid. And he likes to do a lot of cleaning, dressed scantily clad, often in drag, and definitely has kind of like an I Love Lucy vibe in regards to trying to get into Armand's show. And at one point he says that Armand is afraid of his Guatemalanness, his natural heat. Aren't you afraid of my Guatemalanness? Your what? My watermelonness, my natural heat. And that's like one of my favorite lines in the entire movie. I think a lot of people feel the same way. So I had to have a polish that encompassed that. Also, I have to mention that Agador is played by Hank Azaria, another amazing talent. Like this movie just gives and gives and gives. But yeah, I had to choose a polish based off of Agador's natural heat and also slightly inspired by the red wig we get to see him wear. So this is by Danny Viana, Ibis Escarlate, or as I would call it, My Natural Heat. Up next is Plus Life Lacquers, Having a Blast, or as I would call it, Betrayed, Bewildered. So this is a beautiful teal jelly polish full of metallic and iridescent micro glitters. And this is inspired by the scene where Armand is trying to teach Albert to be more masculine because they're going to try to pass him off as Val's uncle instead of Val's other parent. So in this scene, Armand asks Albert how he feels about a call made in the latest Dolphins game. And Albert responds, how do you think I feel? Betrayed? Bewildered? How do you think I feel? Betrayed? Bewildered? Wrong response? And I recite this line like at least once a week and have for my entire life. It's probably my favorite line in the movie. As soon as I knew I was doing this collection, I was like, I have to have one called Betrayed Bewildered. I just think that this part is so funny. Like what an incredible way to reply to that. And I really wanted to find a polish that had like all the colors of this scene. But when I finally watched the scene over again, I realized there's like really not a lot of colors to choose from. Like they're not really wearing interesting outfits. Nathan Lane's wearing a pale pink and uh, Robin Williams is just like wearing a wife beater and they're in front of a tree. So unfortunately there weren't really many great colors to pull from in this scene. So this is actually uh, themed after the color of the Miami Dolphins. And I think it actually fits really well. And especially with how glittery this polish is, I think it looks great with the collection. And like I said before, I don't really have a lot of greens or green blues that fit this aesthetic. So I think this is a really welcome addition to the collection. Anyway, this is Plus Life Lacquer having a blast, or as I would call it, Betrayed? Bewildered? All right, up next is Sir Colors Flamingo, or as I would call it, one does want a hint of color. So this name is inspired by the scene where Albert is still trying to play it straight. So he comes out in a very conservative suit. He sits down, crosses his legs, and he's wearing these mauve socks. So of course, uh, his son and his husband are just like, uh, what's that? And he says, well, one does want a hint of color. Well, one does want a hint of color. And again, 
I say this all the time. I think about it all the time. I knew I wanted to include this in the collection. So Flamine Glow is a beautiful, shifty, pink to gold polish. It's got this base that I think is pretty close to the sock color, maybe a little bit more vibrant, but then it has this beautiful kind of pink to green to gold shimmer running throughout. And of course, tons of hollow because this is a shimmer graphic formula. And in addition to this being in reference to the socks, this is also just kind of a polish for Albert in general. I had a few different ideas of what I wanted to call this. I thought about calling it, I think I would like to hug you, Mother Coleman, which is something that Val's fiance, played by Calista Flockhart, star-studded cast. Again, she says later on in the movie, I decided against that. I considered calling it Albert's practically abreast because that's an amazing part of the movie when uh, Robin Williams says I'm very maternal and Albert's practically abreast like my mom used to laugh so hard at that when I was a kid and like I didn't really get it honestly until I watched it again this time and I was like rolling on the floor it was incredible but yeah the other day in chat I had just watched this so I was wearing it and we decided that it had coastal grandma vibes and I think that Albert really has coastal grandma vibes so this really fits for him and it really fits as a pop of color. So this is Cirque Colors Flamingo, or as I would call it, one does want a hint of color. So the last polish in this collection is named after, of course, one of my favorite lions in the movies and inspired by my favorite cameo character in the movie, who I learned some really interesting trivia about. So this is Essie Let It Bow, or as I would call it, Bob Dole is gorgeous. <laughs> So Bob Dole is Gorgeous is a beautiful white metallic shimmer with a bunch of iridescent micro glitters in it. This was so beautiful and it looked incredible in low light. But before you give me crap about this being another Essie and saying I like Essie or whatever, I do have to say that this formula was very bad. <laughs> I wore it for about 24 hours with Glisten and Glow top coat, and I don't think it ever fully dried. I kept denting it for the rest of the day. It didn't like peel off my nail, but there were definitely tons of dents in it. It never fully set, but it did look good. So this name was inspired by a line one of the drag queens says during the ending scene of the movie when Val and his wife are getting married married. And of course she says Bob Dole is gorgeous because presumably Bob Dole is there. Throughout the piece during shots of the inside of the birdcage, we see this well like white drag queen. She is always in white. She's always wearing this white wig. She's often wearing sequins and very shiny outfits and just kind of has a shiny vibe. I think she's technically supposed to be the hostess and she always has this huge smile on her face like she's having the best time of her life. The way they always show her off, always made me think that she must be some sort of celebrity. And I do think that she has a kind of Barry Bostwick look about her. So at first I was like, wait, is it him? But it turns out she's not Barry Bostwick. She is J. Roy Helland, the lead hair and makeup designer for this movie. And not only that, but when I was looking this guy up, I found out that he's actually the hair and makeup guy for Meryl Streep and has been since the 80s, although they've worked together since the 70s. I guess he just like explicitly works <laughs> with Meryl Streep or she explicitly works with him. But he does have a few awards under his belt, but they're all Meryl Streep movies. And then there's The Birdcage. So I am so excited. I learned about this amazing person who plays my favorite little cameo appearance in The Birdcage. Like I said before about the Sondheim songs, had I not just decided to make this video, I would never have known this person existed. So yeah, this is Essie's Let It Bow, or as I would call it, Bob Dole is gorgeous. All right, so here's my collection all together, and I think they look pretty cohesive and reminiscent of the colors of the film. This was the hardest curated collection I've made so far because this film has a bit of a muted pastel vibe, which is definitely not my vibe, but there's also a lot of glam and glitter, and I think I captured it all in this collection. Anyway, what do you think? Did I do the movie justice? Are there any polishes you would have chosen for this collection? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback and ideas. I love reading your comments. Watching this movie again in recent years has definitely been an interesting experience because when I was a little kid watching it I was much less aware of politics and life in general and I'll be honest with you nowadays this movie makes me a little bit uncomfortable first it's a whole thing with Val trying to hide Albert so that his fiance's conservative family doesn't realize he was raised by two men I honestly don't know how he planned on pulling that off and also he like changed their last name and pretended they weren't Jewish and all of this stuff that like 
I feel like they would have to find out eventually. And it's just like a very weird thing to try to hide. Uh, so watching that is incredibly hard for me. Seeing this kid just really not respect the struggle his parents have been through and the fact that they've built a life where they can be their true authentic selves. It can be pretty hard to watch, although I am really glad that Val does come around in the end. In the original movie, La Caja Full, the person who exposes Albert as being a drag queen is um well he wasn't called armand in that movie but is the armand character and i think it's really good that they had val do it because of course his parents are trying to make life as easy as possible for him but he's really the one who has to come to terms with this and prove that he does love his parents for who they are so i'm really glad that they added that but also there's the political aspects like hearing the senator just talk about the politics of the time, especially the women's right to choose, there's a big emphasis on that during the dinner scene in this movie. And it's extremely depressing to think that not only have we not made any progress in that area as a country, but also we have turned back the women's right to choose to like how it was in the beginning of the 1970s. There's also a part where Val reminds Armand that when Val was in school, Armand had told him to pretend that his father was a businessman and not tell people about his sexual orientation. But right now in that same state, teachers are prohibited from even having conversations like that and are at risk of being fired if they do, due to the don't say gay law. I thought for my entire life up until recently that this movie would be like a funny peek into the backwards politics of the 90s and before then. But sadly, we're hardly any further than we were at the time. And there's a lot of places we've actually gone backwards. But there are still people out there fighting for change. And that brings me back to Equality Florida. So it's Pride Month and that's my favorite time of year. And this year I decided that I wanted to give back. So this year the Fanatic Your Community will be hosting a fundraiser for Equality Florida. If you'd like to participate, there's a few ways you can do that. So tomorrow, June 2nd at 4 p.m. PST, Danny Shout and I are hosting Polish Pickup Bingo and through the Twitch charity function, whatever it's called, we'll be donating all the proceeds from subs and cheers and anything else that goes through Twitch directly to Equality Florida. Also on June 4th, that's a Tuesday at 3 p.m. PST, I'll be doing birdcage themed nails and all of those proceeds will also be going to Equality Florida. Of course, Twitch will be taking a cut of those charity streams. So if you want a little bigger bang for your buck, you can donate directly to Equality Florida through the link in our description. So that link is a special link that tracks how much we personally have raised for Equality Florida. And of course, Hubs and I aren't sitting this one out. We feel so strongly about this cause that we will be matching up to $500 of donations from our community. So if we raise $500, that's actually $1,000 for Equality Florida for this incredible cause. So please, if you have the means this Pride season, help us raise money to make Florida a safer and better place for the LGBTQ plus community. But also if you do not have the money, please do not feel obligated to donate. You need to put your oxygen mask on before you help anybody else. But what you can do is spread the word, spread it to your social media, spread it to your friends and family, and let's get a lot of support for this great cause. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. This video was a doozy to write and film and swatch for and everything but it's pride month and i am so excited to celebrate it with all you sinners out there anyway if you had a really amazing time today please hit that like button if you're new here and aren't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button if you haven't had enough of me, you can check me out on Twitch and Instagram and Discord. And I also have a podcast. It's called Two Lacquered Ladies. And I host it alongside my friend Danny Shout. Have a great day, everyone. Be excellent to yourself. Be excellent to each other. And I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.